Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Yusuf. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with retired Vice Admiral Kevin M. Donegan at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted that the historic relations between Bahrain and the U.S. have contributed to the continual broadening of cooperation in areas of common interest and the foreign of a forging of a mutually beneficial collaboration. He noted the importance of further strengthening the bilateral ties to achieve shared goals and cement the strong bond between the two countries and their people. Retired Vice Admiral Donegan expressed thanks and appreciation for His Royal Highness's commitment to deepening cooperation between Bahrain and the U.S. and wish the Kingdom further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Director General of the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Alon Oshbez, at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness emphasized Bahrain's commitment to broadening the bilateral relations and developing areas of cooperation to achieve shared goals and aspirations. He highlighted the importance of the international community's redoubling of its efforts in support of global peace, stability, and security. Regional and international issues of common interest were discussed. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Bar Rashid Al Zayani, and the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, were present. His Majesty the King's Representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, held an open meeting with secondary students at Ibn Khaldun National School. His Highness hailed the role of Bahraini youth in supporting humanitarian initiatives. He praised the efforts of Nasser al Bina team at the school to restore many houses supported by the Royal Humanitarian Foundation. His Highness spoke with the students about supporting humanitarian initiatives and urged the team to set up a strategy to further develop their initiatives. He stressed support to youth initiatives which contribute to strengthening social cohesion and bringing joy to needy families. Amr Ma'roof recited a poem paying tribute to His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and His Highness Sheikh Nasser, who represent a model for students. Dr. Abdel Noor highlighted the school's role in supporting students' initiatives, and a documentary was shown made by a group of students enrolled at Tawassal Club. His Highness listened to students who shared their ideas and asked questions about humanitarian work and how to develop it in Bahrain and abroad and wished them success. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fozi Zainal, received the Jordanian House of Representatives Speaker, Abdel Karim Dirmi. The meeting discussed the development of parliamentary relations between Bahrain and Jordan and exchanged views on regional and international issues of common interest. Zainal affirmed the deep historical Bahraini Jordanian relations consolidated by the continuous support from His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa and His Majesty King Abdullah II bin Al Hussein. The Jordanian Speaker expressed appreciation for Zainal's commitment to strengthening bilateral parliamentary ties. Zainal also held talks with the Yemeni parliamentary delegation headed by the chairman of the Shura Council, Dr. Ahmed bin Dagr. Zainal said that Bahrain is working closely with regional and international partners to end the Yemeni crisis through diplomatic means. The Yemeni chairman hailed Bahrain's stances and support to Yemen and its interest in its security, stability and development. 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Bar Rashid Zayani, participated in the meeting of the 152nd session of the GCC Ministerial Council, which was held at the General Secretariat in Riyadh. The meeting was chaired by the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Saudi Arabia and President of the current session of the Ministerial Council, His Highness Prince Faisal bin Farhan Al Saud, in the presence of GCC Ministers of Foreign Affairs and with the participation of the GCC Secretary General, Dr. Naif Al Hajraf. They reviewed the topics on the agenda and the decisions that have been implemented in place of the Supreme Council and the Ministerial Council in the context of the GCC state's endeavor to promote Gulf integration and cooperation in various fields, as well as discussing recommendations submitted by the relevant ministerial committees and reports prepared by the Secretariat General on issues and topics related to promoting the process of joint Gulf action. They also discussed the latest developments and strategic dialogues between the GCC countries and international countries and blocs and what has been achieved in free trade negotiations with brotherly and friendly countries, in addition to the latest regional and international developments. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also participated in the joint ministerial meeting of GCC Ministers of Foreign Affairs with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Russian Federation, Sergei Lavrov. The two sides reviewed the relations of cooperation within the framework of the strategic dialogue between the GCC countries and the Russian Federation under the MOU signed between the two sides in November 2011, in addition to discussing regional and international issues of common interest. They also discussed the developments of the situation in Ukraine and its repercussions on security and stability in Europe, the world and the global economy and the efforts being made to resume negotiations between the Russian and Ukrainian sides to reach a ceasefire and settle the conflict through diplomatic means. The Ministerial Council affirmed that the GCC's position on the Russian-Ukrainian crisis is based on the principles of international law and the Charter of the United Nations and the preservation of the international system based on respect for the sovereignty, territorial integrity and political independence of states and non-interference in their internal affairs. It also expressed its support for the mediation efforts of a ceasefire for the political solution to the crisis, giving priority to dialogue and settling the conflict through negotiations. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also participated in the joint ministerial meeting of GCC Ministers of Foreign Affairs with the head of the office of the President, Andrei Yermak, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, Dmitry Kaleba, via video communication. They reviewed cooperation relations between the GCC countries and Ukraine and ways to promote them under the MOU signed between the two sides in November 2017, in addition to discussing regional and international issues of common interest. The two sides also discussed the latest developments in Ukraine and the efforts being made to resume negotiations between the Russian and Ukrainian sides to reach a ceasefire and settle the crisis through diplomatic means. The Ministerial Council affirmed that the GCC position on the Russian-Ukrainian crisis is based on the principles of international law and the Charter of the United Nations and the preservation of the international system based on respect for the sovereignty, territorial integrity and political independence of states and non-interference in their eternal affairs. It also expressed its support for the mediation efforts of a ceasefire and a political solution to the crisis, giving priority to dialogue dialogue and settling the conflict through negotiations and its support for efforts aimed at facilitating the export of food from Ukraine to contribute to providing food security for the affected countries, noting the Gulf humanitarian and relief aid provided to Ukraine. Under the patronage of the Attorney General, Dr. Ali bin Fadl al baini the activities of the training program for the parliamentary and municipal elections for the year 2022, organized by the Public Prosecution in cooperation with the Institute of Judicial and Legal Studies, were launched. The program includes a series of lectures related to elect electoral crimes that witnessed more than 4,000 participants. The program also includes awareness campaigns launched by the Public Prosecution Office with the aim of guiding and raising awareness of the provisions of the law regarding the electoral process in all its stages and the crimes resulting from violating it. This program came under the guidance of the Attorney General in order to guarantee transparency and integrity of the electoral process. The Public Prosecution arranged a training program in relation to the coming 2022 general elections, parliamentary and municipal. This included a set of workshops in relation to electoral process as well as the crimes committed throughout this process. The program actually aims to shed light upon several topics, most important of which are electoral crimes, investigations, judicial control procedures. Uh, it also aims to train and educate more than 4,000 participants among different entities, such as the public prosecution itself, the Ministry of Interior, the Ministry of Justice and Islamic Affairs, 
media affairs, sports and youth, as well as both the lawyers and journalist associations. We truly hope that this program turns out to be fruitful. We hope that the message reaches out to the general public. We also hope that it equips law enforcement officers to combat such crimes in order to achieve a smooth conduct.